Parish on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist on this feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. It's a day on which we pray for all those who are sick, World Day of Prayer for those who are sick. This Mass is televised and is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Ottawa for the intentions of her children and their families and for all those who make the televised Mass possible. The second is an anonymous donor from Brandon, Manitoba for the living and deceased members of her family, for all the schools and their teachers and for peace in the troubled world. And the third is an anonymous donor from Ottawa. Our thanks go out to all these three donors. As we begin this Eucharist, let us pause for a moment as we bring to mind so many of our relatives and friends who are sick, who have borne sickness with great deal of courage and strength, and for all those who take care of people who are sick on this World Day of Prayer for the sick. May the Lord give them strength during this time and give them the courage to bear, carry the cross and help us to come closer to God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of Our Lady of Lourdes, the Immaculate Mother of God, may with the help of her intercessions rise up from our iniquities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and governs with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. The word of the Lord. Good. 
The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to Mark. Jesus called the crowd and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When Jesus left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile since it, enters its, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewer? Thus Jesus declared all foods clean. And he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is within, from within the human heart that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentious envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. It is not what goes into the heart, into a person that defiles, because it goes in and it comes out. For 12 years I worked in Our Lady of Lords Parish and I really loved the work and the people there, but it was time to move and now I moved on to uh, the retreat house in Pickering. And in 10 days' time, to be precise, on the 20th to the 22nd, there will be a retreat for men, and the title is Being Holy or Faking It. Being Holy or Putting on a Show of Holiness, which is very appropriate for our readings today. This, this uh, retreat, by the way, will be given by young Jesuits who are not yet priests. And last Friday, Father Gilles Monjot 
spoke about Paul Miki, the Jesuit martyr in Japan, who was not yet a priest but was brilliant in preaching and brought many people to Christ. And my hope is that these young Jesuits who are going to be priests will do the same thing, being holy or faking it. Yesterday in the gospel, Jesus condemned the scribes and the Pharisees because they were putting on an air of holiness. There was nothing inside that made them holy. Today, he's got the disciples who fail to understand what Jesus is teaching. If he was here in 2015, he could have packed both of them to this retreat. And they would have realized what Jesus is telling us today, that it is not what goes into a person that defiles, because it goes into the body, the stomach digests what it has to, and the rest is excluded as waste matter. But it is one within the heart that makes things different. The scribes and the Pharisees were not bad guys after all. They studied the law very carefully, they kept it in detail, and they tried to correct other people who broke the law. Next Wednesday, today, we will have Ash Wednesday. It's come rather quickly, hasn't it? And it'll also be about laws, laws about praying, laws about fasting, laws about giving alms. The day before Ash Wednesday, I'll be celebrating the anniversary of my mother's death, who also taught me how to keep the law. And especially, not only the law about what I should do correctly, but also the law of having to take care of myself. And she very often will tell me, you cough so very often, you should rub your chest with wicks and do something about it. And I'd say, Mom, I'm suffering from COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. It's like the baldness on my head. I can't do anything about that. She says, I don't want you to do anything. I don't want you to look like Donald Trump. <laughs> so here she was correcting me and taking care of me. And earlier during this month was my brother's birthday. And I wrote a letter to him wishing him a happy birthday. And he wrote back saying, He's 20 years younger than me, and he says, you cough too much, you should rub your chest with Wicks and Benadryl. He actually spelled it correct, I can't spell it. And I thought my mother, even though she's in heaven, she's still taking care of me and asking me to take care of myself, to be of use to others. And that's precisely what the laws were meant. The scribes and the Pharisees used the laws to control people. If you do it out of a loving heart, like my mother and most of us here, all of us here who are in the church today, do it with a loving heart, then the laws help to build a person. Otherwise, we are putting on a show. You see, it happens in all lives, in all ranks of society, politicians, police, priests. The politicians were elected to serve. The police were hired to serve. Jesus called the priest to serve. And sometimes people within these ranks think, <clears throat> I'm going to change it from the active voice to the passive voice. I'm not, going to call, I'm not called to serve, but I'm called to be served. And when you do that, you're throwing the whole set of laws into disarray, and you cause confusion among the very people you're called to serve. It is not what goes into a person that makes the difference. It's what comes out of the heart of the person. And so what was Jesus challenging the scribes and the Pharisees yesterday and the disciples today? Jesus was trying to tell them and to tell me and to tell us all present here, I don't want shallowness. I don't want mirrors and smoke. I want something that is deep down within us something that will have substance. And that will make a difference as we approach Lent next week. It's a way that we have to look within our hearts to make all the difference. Now, Jesus mentioned in our gospel today what defiles the heart, and he put in things like avarice and anger and jealousy. But the positive side about that, and many a time we will find people in our midst who are full of generosity and kindness and are reaching out to others. They care, they're concerned, they have eyes to see and hearts to love. 
And these are the people that make a difference within our society and within our church. In the very first psalm in the book of Psalms, it says, happy the person. And it mentions three postures, the posture of walking, the posture of standing, the posture of sitting. Happy the man that walks not in the company of sinners. Happy the man who does not stand in the path of those who break the law. Happy the man who does not sit with scorners. It's this attitude that we have towards God that makes all the difference in our serving the Lord. And once we have our heart in a good condition, when everything is right and balanced within our hearts, believe me, our church comes alive, our church is happy, and we don't have to bear the brunt of Jesus' scolding of the scribes and Pharisees and of the disciples. Rather, Jesus says to her, Blessed are you because you have ears to hear and eyes to see, and your fruit will grow before the Lord. God bless you all. Let us pray together. <clears throat> On this world day of sick, that we pray for the sick, let us pray for a moment for all those within our midst who are sick. Let's pray for those just around the corner from this church and the different hospitals, especially the Sick Kids Hospital, Toronto General, and other hospitals across the country. As people take care of the sick, may the Lord bless them. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for doctors and caregivers and nurses and palliative caregivers. For all of them and their loving, tender care for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase of vocations to priestly and religious life, for a blessing on all the single people within our church who continue to witness with their way of life, and a blessing on married couples, we pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in the world, especially in the troubled spots of Egypt and the Middle East and Iraq and Pakistan and India, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the many graces that you have given us. Grant that we may reach out to you with love and kindness and reach out to the brothers and sisters with the same tenderness through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes, Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Yes, God, Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Our Lady of Lourdes, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no requ request may be in vain. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, 
to give you thanks, to praise your mighty deeds and the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of Our Lady of Lourdes, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and have extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked at the lowliness of your handmaid and gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs as we sing. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostle, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of that peace and friendship. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks. Our thanks to our three donors for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick. And your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the salvation of Holy Mass.